Good morning. How's everybody doing? Some people still asleep? I want to tell you my story. Um, I went to bed at roughly 1 a.m. last night. I got up at uh, 6.30. Um, I went to the office because of the faster internet and the no distraction at this hour. So I have to say I have three kids, so um, it's easier to work in the office. It's completely uh, empty at this uh, time in the day. At 7 a.m., uh, I was there, zero slides. I hacked all the night on the demo, essentially. Um, here I am. I got a couple of slides. Hopefully, um, you will enjoy them. Um, and yeah, without any further ado, let's start with the presentation. My name is uh, Thomas Steiner. I work for um, a search engine that is located very closely to here um, in the ABC Straße. Um, and uh, I'm also a postdoctoral researcher in uh, the Université Claude Bernard Lyon 1 in uh, Lyon in France, obviously. Um, and um, yeah, here I'm presenting stuff that is kind of in between my two jobs. Um, so in Google, we have this great um, tradition of 20% projects. Um, you could say this is one of my 20% um, projects that I've uh, worked on. And um, yeah, it's in the broader context of uh, crisis response. And um, yeah, today I want to show you some bleeding edge uh, research, 20% uh, stuff that I'm working on, on uh, natural disaster monitoring with Wikipedia and Google Maps. So here we go. Um, what are natural disasters? So let's think of a couple of examples. So probably the most recent one that is in everybody's mind because it was like very present um, everywhere in, in the news media, uh, the Mount Ontake uh, eruption. And um, everything you see here is taken from Wikipedia with the proper uh, yeah, accreditation links down here and the, the, um, the correct link uh, up here. Uh, so this is an image from uh, a user called Alpsdake. I'm not sure how to pronounce it. Alpsdake, maybe if he uh, is Japanese, I'm, I'm not sure. But uh, you can see this is like a, a split screen um, before and after. So you may have heard this volcanic eruption has caught uh, quite a couple of deaths and, uh, and injuries also. Um, this is something um, that was a little bit before. Um, it's an earthquake that hit um, the Napa Valley area in, uh, in Southern California. Um, most people on Twitter were yeah, kind of laughing about it because, you know, it's an earthquake, but it's kind of funny if only uh, cubs move. Um, but in this case, one building um, somewhere in uh, the United States um, in, in the Napa Valley uh, got, yeah, destroyed. But I mean, this is something, it was very broad in the media, but nothing really serious happened. Um, but still, uh, Wikipedia also has a record of it. And uh, one last example, uh, the typhoon Matmo um, that was active in 2014 um, also hit uh, parts of the Philippines, for example. And uh, this is an image from uh, someone called Breakdown Diode. And you can see here, well, a typhoon is typically connected with a lot of water um, that hits the streets, that floods the streets. Um, so you can see here, there is some serious damage here. Um, all right, so as I said, what is a natural disaster? Um, I started with a couple of examples, but I mean, if you want to go a little bit more formal, um, what can you do? Well, you look up what is a natural disaster, and you go to Wikipedia, obviously. Um, so this is um, a screenshot of the natural disaster Wikipedia page. Um, I've highlighted here the relevant part. Um, a natural disaster is a major adverse event resulting from natural processes of the Earth. Examples include floods, volcanic eruptions, earthquakes, tsunamis, and other geologic processes. So if you're anything like me, you had to look up adverse. It means harmful. Um, all right. But yeah, the next thing is, well, and other. So the question is, what else? What else is a natural disaster? Well, we had a couple of examples. Uh, volcanic eruptions, earthquakes, tsunamis, and so on. But, well, I mean, we haven't really had an, a complete list of, of all possible natural disasters. So if you scroll down a bit in this article, and this is taken from the um, mobile version of Wikipedia just because it's a little bit more readable for, for this sort of uh, audience, um, you can see, well, in the table of contents, there is a list of um, 
natural disasters. So it starts with uh, avalanches, earthquakes, volcanic eruptions, hydrological disasters, floods, limnic eruptions, and so on. So the list goes down. So this already isn't bad. I mean, I'm not a super expert in natural disasters, but um, I would have maybe listed half of them, if I think a bit, maybe two th uh, three thirds. Um, but um, uh, so sorry, three three quarters, <laughs> three thirds. <laughs> um, so three quarters of them, but certainly not all of them. But obviously, Wikipedia is um, edited by amateurs, but also by experts. So um, in this case, this list is really a list of all uh, natural disaster types that can occur. And I will show in the uh, in the um, continuation. Um, it goes into great detail. So if you look at one concrete example, uh, say floods. Um, you can see here, so this is still the same page. I'm sc I've scrolled down, so you can see it here from the fragment. I've scrolled down to, f to floods. Um, floods is in the category of hydrological disasters, so hydro, something with water. Um, and then you can see here, there's a red box, main article, flood. Oh, interesting. So um, apparently, this is like a general introduction, but then there is a main article about this sort of natural disaster. If you go down a little bit more, the next is blizzard, main article, blizzard, again, this red box. If you go down, cyclonic storms. Um, and then you can see here, um, it's in the bigger hierarchy of cyclonic storms, tropical cyclones. Um, there are tropical cyclones and cyclones, and then there are extra tropical cyclones. So it's kind of complex a bit if uh, you've never heard of these terms. Um, Typically, it's typhoon, cyclone, tropical cyclone, and so on. So um, if you look up, it's essentially everything the same, but in different regions. So it's the same meteorolog meteorological phenomenon, but in different areas of the world. So if you hear typhoon, it's in that area. If you hear uh, cyclone, it's in that area. If you hear extratropical cyclone, it's in yet another area of the world. But essentially, it's all the same. And this is why Wikipedia puts it all in uh, this uh, combined category, cyclonic storms. All right, so um, now we had the natural disasters introduction article with all the different main article links. So what happens if we go to one concrete one? So let's go to flood. If I look up flood in Wikipedia, so if I follow the link to uh, the flood article, um, this is how it looks like. And now you see I've switched to the desktop version um, of Wikipedia, but essentially the, the content is the same, just the presentation is different. So before it was the mobile version, but now I want to point your uh, interest to another red box. So this is the list of um, yeah, languages that this article exists in. Um, so that's kind of interesting because it's a super powerful dictionary in the end. Um, so let's zoom in a bit, so this is taken again from the um, mobile page, but as I said, the content is the same. This tells you that flood is called Hochwasser in German. Nice. It's called Inundation in uh, Catalan. It's called Ba in Bahas Banjar, or however you pronounce that language, I'm not even sure. Um, Poblava in Bozanski, and so on. So you have a huge list of languages that obviously I don't speak and that probably most of you don't speak neither, but the good thing is, you know, because they're, they're interconnected, this is the same semantic concept. Why is that important? Let's step back one step. So if you have a page on Wikipedia about Jaguar, how many of you think Jaguar, the car? How many of you think Jaguar, the animal? How many people of you think Jaguar, the old version of OS X? So <laughs> you can see language is... Um, yeah, super powerful, but it's, it's ambiguous. There are terms that have different meanings in different contexts. So on Wikipedia, if this sort of thing happens, um, you have so-called disambiguation aids. So you have a page that is called uh, Jaguar underscore the animal, for example. So now you know, okay, this is about a concept called Jaguar, but it's about the operating system, or it's about the animal, it's about whatever. So this is super powerful when you look at it, in the broader context of, of terms. So as I said, this is about languages. So if you don't know, if you don't know the language, um, you cannot be sure, is it really this what I'm referring to? But if you look at the Wikipedia dictionary, if you want to call it that way, um, you can see, well, this is super powerful as a concept. So this is important uh, as the idea of one. We're using Wikipedia as 
a dictionary, starting with articles that, uh, starting with languages that we know, so English, for example, or German, um, and then going out from there, getting the links to the same semantic concept in different languages. All right, so this is idea one. Let's introduce idea two. Um, on Wikipedia, on each article, you have one tiny link. Um, let's see if we can find it here. So if you start with uh, the main article page, you can see here what links here. It's kind of small, but maybe you can see my mouse move. So it's here. This is on every single Wikipedia page. No matter what, it's always there. If you click through to it, you can see pages that link to flood. So pages means Wikipedia articles written in, in this case, English. Um, I've highlighted a couple of them. So you can see the article about coast links to flood. This makes sense, right? So floods can hit coasts. Um, floods, the next red box, are typically connected with uh, earthquakes. So or not typically, but sometimes connected uh, with earthquakes. So this also makes sense. Um, and then you can see uh, many, many others. So this list is very, very long. You can see only the, the very beginning of this list. So it's thousands of articles long that link to the flood um, article. Um, but then let's highlight one concrete other one. It's this one, Columbus, Ohio. That's a town in, uh, in Ohio, obviously. Um, and uh, if you look up Columbus, Ohio flood in the news, this is one of the articles that you can find. So you can see already, whoa, this is powerful because it connects concepts like flood, like earthquake, to potential news events about this. So um, now, now I've shown uh, just one article from uh, a web page called 10TV. It's probably some, some, some sort of uh, local Ohio news. Um, and then you can see here an article, residents clean up damage after overnight flooding near Buckey Lake. So you can see this is powerful. Sometimes some of these links are super active because um, there's a news event that's related to it. And if I say news event, um, I'm mostly focusing on natural disasters. All right, so this is another idea. So first we had the languages. We have the huge dictionary of languages. And now we have the link network, so pages that link to these semantic concepts. And now, if you step back one step and think in the broader context, we have for each article, flood. We know that flood is called Hochwasser in German. Then we can, on the German Hochwasser Wikipedia page, click the link, Seiten, die auf diese Seite linken. OK, we go there. And maybe we find Oder Hochwasser. So that's super powerful. Um, because we have this for each single language in this world that is on Wikipedia. And Wikipedia is written in 287 languages. So this is pretty amazing. So we have a super powerful language network. We have a super powerful link network. And now the next uh, idea is, well, how can, we, how can we connect these? It doesn't stop here. Wikipedia is even more awesome than that. For many pages, for many articles, like in this case, the Columbus, Ohio, there is something super useful in on what you can see on the right side, right side hand um, in the info boxes. Um, it's kind of small here, but it's another red box. I love red boxes. Um, and if we zoom in here, you can see what we have there. That's the geo coordinates. So it's 39 degrees, 59 minutes north, 82 degrees, 59 minutes, whatever. So this gives us the exact location of this place. And now, if you put it on a map, and we know how to put geolocations uh, or geocoordinates on a map, you can see, well, this is how it looks like. This is a map of the United States. This is Columbus, Ohio. <clears throat> Great. So again, I want to put this in the bigger context. Why is this cool? Because we had the language network, we had the link network, and now finally, we have the geo network. So we know for many articles where on the Earth is this place, or where on the Earth is this um, semantic concept, which uh, is uh, another way of referring to it. So that's also super, super cool. So if we put this in um, like a diagram, this is how you could depict it. Um, and this is uh, taken from a scientific paper that I'm going to present in a, in a week uh, in, in Italy at the International Semantic Web uh, Conference at a workshop uh, that is about um, yeah, developer uh, development of 
of semantic web uh, applications. So this is taken from this paper. And um, let me walk you through this diagram. So it starts up here, N natural disaster. So N is English, so everything uh, has a namespace on Wikipedia that is essentially the language. So N dot natural disaster. Remember, this was the natural disaster portal page. OK, then we call this seed article. Then we go down and uh, get all the main article links that are contained in this natural disaster portal page. OK, one of them is maybe N tropical cyclone. Great. OK, from that, we get all the possible redirects, so pages that link to that page that are redirects. That, so uh, if, if you type them in the browser um, and you type, for example, n tropical storm, so n.wikipedia.org slash wiki slash tropical storm, you end up on uh, n tropical cyclone. Um, this is also very powerful because it gives us a redirection network that tells us, well, these are different terms that people refer um, that, that, that people refer uh, to a, a certain semantic concept, like a tropical cyclone in this case. Um, and then we have the outbound links. So these are all the links that go out from this article. I haven't tell, uh, told you about this one, but if you look at each single Wikipedia page, you can see there's a lot of blue. So these are all the out links that link out from this concrete Wikipedia article to other Wikipedia articles. And obviously, you have some links that go in as well. We saw them on, uh, on this slide. So we have a network of inbound links, of outbound links, and of redirect links that point us to the, um, yeah, to, to the semantic concept like uh, Columbus, Ohio, in this case. <clears throat> All right, so we have these different networks of links, outbound links, inbound links. From that, we can calculate mutual links, so links that are from one article to the other and from the other article back to the initial article. So we have a mutual link, and we have the outbound links, we have the inbound links. And um, now we can do this recursively for all the languages that we find. So um, I started with a Tropical Cyclone. This is called Tropische Wirbelsturm in German. Um, from there, we can see there's a, an inbound link, Pacifische Typhoon Saison 2014, that points to that. And uh, here we have Tropical Cyclone in English, Typhoon Ramazon 2014. An outbound link is Disaster Preparedness. A mutual link is 2014 Pacific Typhoon Season. And uh, I want to point your attention to this. So this is a mutual link in English, Pacific Typhoon Season. But in German, Pazifische Typhoon Saison, it's only an inbound link to this article. So you can see, well, for some language versions, the link network is different, but that's OK. Um, we can work with it. Um, so this is obviously only a very, very, very small part of this graph. If you think about it, well, if I did this for every single um, yeah, language, two, 287, um, for every single natural disaster, that I find on this natural disaster portal page, you can imagine this is a huge graph. It's actually 144,000 something pages long. So that's nice. That's a powerful link network that tells us for a, a, a huge set of uh, Wikipedia pages which natural disaster are they connected to and in what way. Are they an inbound link? Are they an outbound link? Are they a mutual link? Are they a redirect? And uh, it doesn't stop here because we also have the geo network. So we also know for many of these Wikipedia articles, well, there is um, a network of yeah, geo coordinates that allows us to put these places, these articles on a map. So that's very, very powerful. Um, why are we doing this? Or why am I doing this? Calling, uh, uh, talking in the royal we, so scientific style, sorry. So why am I doing this? Well, it's in the broader uh, context of uh, yeah, public alerts. Um, this will be with uh, sound now, so um, hopefully this is going to play. It's an embedded video of the Google Public Alerts team. I have to say I'm not part of this team, so this is um, based in New York and uh, San Francisco. I'm just using their video. But this is the context of why I'm working on this 20% project. There are things that happen which are out of our control. Natural disasters can be hard to predict and hard to avoid. 
In times of crisis, the web is one place you can turn to for help. And public alerts from Google is one way you can stay updated and hopefully out of danger. Available across Google Search, Google Maps, and Google Now, it provides information in times of crisis, like what areas are affected, when it's safe to go back, or where to find shelter. It might not be possible to stop the next hurricane, the next flood, or the next earthquake, but with real-time updates on what's going on, public alerts is one way the web is looking out for you. All right, so this is Google's public alerts team that work that if you hit a hurricane, hopefully your phone buzzes and tells you, whoa, maybe you should stop going where you wanted to go and maybe hit a hurricane shelter. Um, obviously, um, we are living in a relatively safe place of the Earth. There are other places on the, on the Earth where this could be essential. Um, if you live in Japan, you probably uh, have yeah, uh, lived more than one earthquake um, that was really something where people were like, oh, that's serious. So um, Google's public alerts team works on uh, yeah, making the world a more aware place in case of danger. Um, so the problem with this is, well, all the things that you've seen, the crisis map and so on, this is human created. That's super powerful because it's real humans who are able to do that. But the problem also is there's a certain time lag. So I was doing research on, well, can this be somewhat at least automated? So humans are never replaceable for this sort of thing. But maybe there's a way to um, at least get a little bit faster information about what's happening, where, and so on, um, by simply listening to Wikipedia. Um, all right, so everything I've told you so far about the link network, the language network, the redirection network, the uh, geo-references, um, and so on, everything is available via Wikipedia's public API. And if I say Wikipedia API, I actually have to say MediaWiki API, because um, it uses MediaWiki as an engine, and the API is just something that you get for free. <clears throat> this is the beautiful documentation. If you really work with the API, at some point you hit the more ugly publication, uh, ugly, ugly documentation, which is actually just one uh, PHP uh, file that is an XML file that gets somewhat rendered and shows you um, a couple of examples, a couple of yeah possible things you can do with this API. But um, I want to just summarize: you can do everything you, we have seen so far and a lot more in an automated way, so just using the API. All right, so this is good news because now we have all this information programmatically accessible. So we can use the MediaWiki API and get from Wikipedia all this relevant data about languages, about um, the link, link network, about geo. So that's cool. If you have geo information, well, you can use whatever uh, geo maps service you like. I'm working for a company that happens to have one, and it's actually quite good, I think. Um, we have the Google Maps JavaScript API that allows you to do amazing things. So one of them, and uh, I want to show, uh, I want to highlight this uh, in particular, um, is you can create heat maps and, um, very easily. So why is it important? Because sometimes, well, you have semantic concepts, you have uh, and uh, I don't know, uh, a hurricane, a cyclone, whatever, <clears throat> you roughly know the area, so you know that Typhoon Ramazoon hit here and there, um, but you don't know the exact location, you don't know the exact radius. Um, and you have this for different languages. And the thing is, sometimes these different languages don't agree on the exact geo-coordinates. So if I ask you, what, is the geo what are the geo-coordinates of Hamburg? Well, you can go to a map and try to find it, but where do you put the center of Hamburg? It's, it's completely impossible. So this is also what um, commonly happens on Wikipedia. So there's certainly um, something like a hotspot where people agree on it's roughly here, but there's no exact one point. So even if you ask them, well, draw a polygon, it's impossible. Um, because, well, it's a question of exact, uh, uh, exactness, how exact do you want to be, how um, uh, approximate do we want to be, um, so a heat map is a great way to kind of live with this uh, inexactness. 
So there's a heat map layer that is available uh, in the visualization uh, library of uh, the Google Maps API, so it's not in the standard uh, SDK, but you can just easily uh, get it, um, as, as explained in the documentation that, that is here. Um, you just pull in the visualization library, and then you can do things like this. So you, so you can draw heat maps on certain areas, and this is just an example. Um, but let me show you the code, because essentially this is a code talk, so at least a little bit of code. and. Um, it's always hard to put code on a slide, so uh, hopefully you can still read it. Um, let me talk you through it. So you start with heat map data. So what do you want to plot on a heat map? So essentially, it's points. So you can see here, uh, I'm, uh, I'm, grading <coughs> I'm creating sorry, uh, latitude, longitude pairs, so objects essentially. Uh, put them in an array. So all these are just points. So everything from here to there is just points. All right, then, so because looking back, Every, uh, every example of uh, Google obviously uses San Francisco as an example. Um, they have a variable called uh, San Francisco that just puts the map, um, yeah, on um, yeah, the, 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 the center of the map on uh, San Francisco. And then, if you've ever worked with uh, the Maps API, you can see how it, how it goes. Um, you create a map var a variable. Um, you instantiate the object. You have um, the um, the diff that holds the map, the, the container, then you set the center to this point, which is San Francisco. You set the, you set the zoom, so zoom level, how, how close do you want to go? Um, you choose the map type ID, so satellite, going back there, this is a satellite map. There are many other kinds of map, but for this example, uh, they chose the satellite. And then we have the heat map, so we instantiate the heat map layer by just creating it, setting its data a property to the heat map data array that we've created so far. Then we have the heat map, and now we just set its map to the map that we've created here as a ugly global variable. So <laughs> maybe I should file a bug that they make this variable local. Um, so yeah, you can see here, it's easy. It's a couple of lines of code. Uh, code. Um, the heat map is essentially just this layer of points and the amazing thing is, um, this is, um, so what, what you put in here, this is something that they call a model view controller array, which is cool because you simply can push in new points as they arrive, and the heat map automatically updates. So you don't do, need to do anything, you just uh, call heatmap.data.push, you add a new point, and the heat map automatically updates. That's powerful, you don't need to take care of that. Um, it's a great level of, uh, of abstraction that makes um, certain things very easy. And uh, this brings me to the next and uh, yeah, final topic of, uh, of this presentation, um, the Natural Disaster Monitor. Um, you can see a screenshot of it. It's kind of a super hacky demo application. It's super early stage research. Um, what it does is essentially it listens on the Wikipedia recent changes IRC stream. So this is something that is also super nice. Um, on Twitter, you have the streaming API. Everybody probably has, at some point at least, used it, list, uh, looked at some of uh, the demo applications. The nice uh, thing is Wikipedia has something similar. They publish each and every edit to an article on a uh, specific IRC channel that is grouped by language. So for every language, every 287 uh, languages of Wikipedia have an IRC channel where whenever someone changes an article, a message get broadcast by a, gets, gets broadcast uh, by, a bo by a bot. Um, there's a nice Node.js library that you can connect to this uh, IRC uh, channel and then simply um, yeah, react on the events. So that's nice. And um, what I'm doing then uh, as a preparation is I've created programmatically um, what I call my monitoring list. So you can see here, 144,102 candidate Wikipedia articles that are from the creational step that you've seen before. So starting with natural disasters, getting each single instance of natural disasters, so flood, blizzard, blah, and so on. Then from each of those, getting all the language versions, so flood, hochwasser, uh, inundation, uh, no matter what, all the languages. Then from each of these single articles, getting the, um, the link network, so the inbound links, the outbound links, and um, the redirection links, and the geo-coordinates, wherever they're possible. So I have a very huge list. 
um, of all Wikipedia articles that are somewhat connected to natural disasters. And uh, if I then use uh, this sort of visualization, which is uh, a little bit hard to read, so let me zoom in on the next page. You can see here, this is um, not the best visualization ever, but uh, it gives you a rough idea. Um, for each um, type of um, natural disaster, you have um, a, a certain color, and then I'm um, just um, as new uh, events arrive, I'm just plotting them on the heat map. And this certainly makes sense. So if you look at this area of the world and you look at the color tornado, sure, that certainly happens in this area of the world. If you look at this color, bluish, it's a heat wave. So California was hit by a heat, heat wave. If you look at uh, Japan, you can see a lot of things happening there because, well, Japan is a super dangerous area um, because many natural disasters hit here. And this is where I'm saying it's not the best visualization ever. It's really, I worked on the demo until yesterday night. Um, so what I ideally want is have some sort of checkbox so that you can say, only show me, I don't know, the, the earthquakes. And then you could see, well, um, all, the, all the earthquakes that hit Japan um, get plotted there. Um, we have uh, Australia. This should probably be bushfires. Not sure. Uh, Cyclonia, of course, it, it, it also gets hit by cyclones and so on. Um, we had, um, it's kind of hard, as I said, because the visualiz visualization is a, isn't perfect. Somewhere here we have um, um, wildfire. Um, so this certainly makes sense. And uh, this is only, uh, this has only run for uh, like three hours. So it's completely not representative at this point of, uh, point of uh, state. But, well, you can see it's, um, it's something that could make sense if you let it run over the time. Um, and if you work on the visualization, you can certainly see, well, there are certain areas in this world that get hit by certain things. And uh, maybe then human inspection can be necessary. All right. So everything that I'm showing here is open source. So you can see the uh, link to my GitHub repo here. And I also have a deployed demo that hopefully is able to run. So let me just very quickly switch the tab here. And it is indeed running. Let me zoom in. All right, so if I zoom a bit, you can see here, um, this is something that really listens to the pulse of Wikipedia. Um, you can see, um, the very fastly moving thing. This is mm, this, these are the articles that are edited right now. So if you go out and edit Wikipedia, you can see it here if you're fast, fast enough. So that's super amazing. It's really the Wikipedia streaming API. Um, and you can see it's all sorts of languages. So you can see uh, Japanese, Dutch, uh, English, uh, German, Italian, French, uh, Swedish. So it's even way too fast to read. Um, but then, obviously, not all of them are interesting because not all of them have geocoordinates. Not all of them are really connected to something that is um, interesting. So here you can see I'm also looking at how spiking are they. If they're spiking, if there is a lot of editing ac activity in um, the recent day, then probably it's something that is more important than um, yeah, just a regular edit where someone uh, does something. Um, so these are all the articles that have uh, a geolocation, and then you can see the link network here. And um, again, this is super hacky. It's not very useful at this point in time, but you can see um, this place in Japan is connected um, one third to volcanic eruption, one third to flood, and one third to drought. When you have this information, you can put it on the heat map. So whenever some of these uh, get added, and this is dynamic, so if you, if you wait uh, for long enough, you can see there's a new one added. Uh, added. So let's maybe remember the last one was N uh, Gazer. I'm not sure how to pronounce it. N Gazer connected to an earthquake. Um, and meanwhile, let's look up here. So we have Japan. It's a bit hard to zoom. So if we zoom in, we can see this area is connected to tsunami. And um, well, if you think back nuclear, nuclear power plants, obviously this is very much uh, a serious, serious topic. 
Um, all right, let's scroll down. Yeah, we have something new. So you can see the geyser has moved up here. We have a couple of new interesting um, events. Uh, so this one is even spiking, but it's not, um, not connected with uh, a geolocation, so it's not interesting in this case. So you can see there is some potential here to maybe make this interesting. So now Nigeria spiking connected to drought, this certainly makes sense. Um, so yeah, this gives you a very rough idea. Um, the good thing is, if I go back to my slide, um, and present, the good thing is, this is open source. This is very early stage research. I'm not claiming that this is super useful at this point in time. Um, but I think you can see the power of it. And uh, if you're uh, anything uh, interested in um, working with this, the source code is here. Um, you can hit the deploy demo just for fun of it. Um, I warn you, if you do it on your mobile phone, uh, it includes downloading a, 10, a roughly 10 megabyte uh, JSON file that crashed my iPhone when I tried to parse it. So um, not sure if you, if you have more, more luck on, uh, I don't know, maybe bigger devices. It crashed, crashed my browser. Um, but it works very fine on, uh, on a desktop. So um, thanks also for Heroku for making this sort of uh, free tier applications possible. So if you want to uh, work with this or just look at it because it's nice or not, um, because you like the rainbow colors, um, feel free to do so. Um, I'm very happy um, if uh, yeah, you check out the source code um, and um, yeah, work with it. And um, this is very much my last slide. So you can see my contact, contacts here. If you want to share the slides or are interested in the slides, it's bit.ly slash disaster dash monitor. Um, I'm on Twitter. I have email. I'm here. Thank you very much. <laughs>